Hi, welcome to our first creative prayer night here at Calvary Church. We're super excited about this season that we're going to be heading into where we're going to be returning to our regular every second Tuesday of the month prayer. Now there's a couple of things that we find really important here at Calvary and we wanted to emphasize to our congregation and to the people here at Calvary Church. And one is that we are people that rely on prayer in the presence of God. And so something we want to do is be praying together often. And so that's why we're continuing with this prayer gathering that we have at the second Tuesday of every single month. But another thing that we find really important, especially during the season of COVID-19, is that we wanted to give you access to things in your home so that you can do them on your own more often. And so some of you are watching this on Zoom Live on a Tuesday night, and some of you are watching this at home on a Wednesday afternoon and you're with your family. I think that's fantastic that you're gonna be taking your family or yourself through this, maybe on a regular basis. And so every single month, we're gonna be uploading a new creative prayer night where you can actually do this on your own, in your home, maybe at a time that really works well for you. And if not, you can join us on second Tuesday of every single month where we'll be praying together. And so for this outline this week, we're gonna be going through something called the Acts Prayer. Now this is something that I was taught when I was younger. I'm not even really sure where I learned it from. And so some of you might be familiar with it and some of you may have never heard this before. Now ACTS, that's an acronym. And it just gives us a simple outline of what we're gonna be doing. And so we're gonna start praying for adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication, A-C-T-S. And so that's gonna be the outline of this next guided prayer that you're gonna go through. We're gonna go through those four sections. In them will be some worship, we'll read some scripture, and we'll pray specifically on those things. Now, to help make this just the best experience ever, if you're here with your family or if you're going through this alone and even you're somebody like me where sometimes your mind wanders often, we've actually created some worksheets um, that will be in the link for the YouTube channel. And so you can kind of grab these and these will actually help again your kids, teenagers, or even yourself if you're somebody that really needs to, on top of visual, actually have something to be writing down as you're going. So there's some adult coloring pages with scriptures attached to them. And then there's actually a worksheet with some extra little things that you can be going through as well. And so feel free to download that and use that as a guide as we go through this prayer together. Now at the beginning of each section, we're actually starting off with a scripture. And you'll notice that this scripture is the same scripture every single time. And we did that on purpose. I think that's something we also need to learn is how to read scripture a little more slowly, especially if we're gonna be going into a time of prayer. Meditating on scripture is just such a key component. And so we're actually reading Psalm 63, verse one to eight, four times. And each time we're just reading a different version. So we'll use the NIV, the NLT, and then a couple of more. And so if you have your Bible with you, you can actually open up to Psalm 63 and use that as a guide as we go through as well. You can underline or highlight or even pray on it. We're going to be going through that scripture a few times. Now the first thing that we're going to do, even before we get into this Acts outline, is we're going to acknowledge and understand that there's going to be some distractions that come into our minds, into our thoughts. And so rather than just pretending like that's not going to happen as we head into like a a decently long prayer time, is that we're actually going to acknowledge it and we're going to actually make a list of them. I'm not sure if you guys are like me, but often while I'm saying to God, hey, I'm going to put aside some time to pray or I'm going for a walk or whatever it might be, even a drive as I'm praying, so many things come flying into my head, work or stress or family or the phone rings, whatever it might be. And so something that I have found actually really helpful is just acknowledging it at the beginning of my prayer and saying, hey, I'm gonna grab a notebook or a piece of paper and I'm gonna write down all of the things that probably will come into my mind. I'm gonna acknowledge them, I'm gonna make a list of them, and then I'm intentionally going to take this list and I'm going to put it aside, knowing and telling myself, I'm gonna come back to these things in just a little while, but I wanna focus on this time of prayer. And even by just doing that simple act, You're telling your mind, hey, I acknowledge these things and I'm putting them aside and the distractions actually come in a little bit less. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off our prayer by actually just taking some time. So if you have a pencil or a pad of paper, if you're on your computers, I would love for you to just write a list for the next minute of all of the things that might be distractions that pop into your head. Make a list of the things that you need to get done, the stresses in your life, and then intentionally put them aside, physically put them aside. And then just say to God before we start, God, I'm putting these things aside. They are important and I will come back to them, but I'm going to spend this time with you. And then we're going to head into our Acts outline.
we're going to start our prayer off with adoration. Now, the reason we're going to do this is because I think all of our prayers should start off with praise. For example, when Jesus teaches us to pray in Matthew chapter 6 with the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father, he starts off the prayer by saying, Our Father, the one who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. When we do something like that at the beginning of our prayer, when we start with adoration or praise, we actually just submit ourselves yet again to who God is. So easily we can just start our prayers off by saying, God, this is where I'm headed and this is what I need. Can you help me with this? Can you give me peace? And, and we're kind of on our own agenda and that can happen really quickly. But when we start off with adoration, when we start our prayer off with praise, what we're saying to God is, God, I'm partnering with you to extend the kingdom of God here on earth. Where are you going? Who, it is, who is it that you are? I'm here to partner with you. And as we go along in that journey, I might need your help or I might need your guidance. But when we start off with adoration, we actually put selfish ambitions aside. We actually kind of put our selfishness prayers aside and we say, God, I'm going to just start off by reminding myself of who you are. So let's start our prayer off tonight with adoration. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 8, NLT. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting my hands up to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night, because you are my helper. I can sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you, your strong right hand holds me securely. my mind to Calvary Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his head and feet my Savior on that cursed tree
of wine The blazing sun shall pierce the night And I will rise among the saints My gaze transfixed on Jesus
let's close this time of adoration off in prayer. God, we just come before you again, and we thank you. No, we don't. Let's close this time off of adoration in prayer. God, you are so good. We remind ourselves that you are creator of the world and yet the type of God who wants a personal relationship with us as well. And so we just start off our prayer and we just take this time to acknowledge that you are God and we are not. And we submit ourselves to you and to your will. And God, we just remind ourselves of all of the things that you are, the things that we've been taught, the promises that we've heard or read in scripture. And so, God, we just praise your name. We thank you for being creator. We thank you for being father. We thank you for all of the things that you are. And even as sometimes uncertainty surrounds us, we just yet again submit ourselves to you, God. We praise you and we thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. The second part of our prayer is confession. In this part, we're going to take some time for personal prayer, but then we're also going to come together and we're going to do communion together as well. So get your communion emblems and bread and water or drink ready for that part. When it comes to confession, there's one thing that I just want us to kind of keep in our mind. Confession is not about me coming to God in order to wipe my sins away so that I can get to heaven. What it is, is that we need to have relationship maintenance happening often. If you've ever had a friendship where all of a sudden it's been severed because of a conflict, you know that normally if something good's happening in your day and you would text them, you're actually hesitant to text them because there's something in the way. Or if all of a sudden you're in need of a friend, but you haven't maintained that relationship very well, the person that you would normally call, you actually are hesitant to even talk to them. And I find that this can happen to us and God often. All of a sudden something's happening, but we're too nervous to go to God because we're filled with guilt because we actually haven't maintained that relationship. And so what we're going to do often in our prayers is confession because it's actually going to help us maintain that relationship with God so that as we're going throughout our day, it's a relationship that we are very comfortable in, that we're reminded again of who God is and who we are and there's nothing between us. And so let's take this time today to go through the act of confession together. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you I reign, still life. You raise, you have no right. Have no equal now and forever, God. You reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name. My name, what a wonderful name it is, nothing can fend against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever. Yours is the name above 
Christ my King. What a powerful name it is that nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Cause death could not hold you. They'll talk before you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you were raised to life again. What a powerful name. What a powerful name, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.
The Passover was the most sacred feast of the Jewish religious year. It was a celebration of the Israelites' freedom from slavery and that their lives had been spared because of the blood of a sacrificial lamb. What Jesus did when he sat down at the table with his disciples for the Last Supper before his death was transformational for the Passover, for all of humanity, and especially for the church. Jesus breaks bread and drinks wine with his followers, instructing them to carry this tradition on, this ordinance, after he is gone. Why? Because he knew what was about to happen that very next day. He knew that we would need to remind ourselves that we are not only no longer slaves to our sin and to death, but that because of his sacrifice, we don't live by an old covenant anymore. A new covenant was being ushered in that same night. No more blood sacrifices, no more righteous only access to approach God. Why? Because the sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ, paid our debt once and for all. This is what I love about communion, a metaphorical table that Jesus has set and given an open invitation for all of us to sit and to break bread with him and with each other at. Your gender, your skin color, the money in your bank account, the mistakes of your yesterday and the struggles of our today, they do not disqualify us from a seat at this table. And that is only made possible because of the cross. The only qualifier is that you believe that there is a God who loved you enough to send a necessary sacrifice by way of his son Jesus so that you would not die, but that you would live and live to the full. So as we eat of the bread, symbolic of Jesus' body that was broken for us, remember that you don't need to earn your way into the presence of God anymore. You simply need to call out his name and he will hear you and he will meet you. Let's eat bread together. And as we drink of the juice or whatever you have in your house, that for right now symbolizes the blood that was poured out for us, I want you to remember that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. For the one who feels forgotten, not possible. For the one who feels too far out of reach to be brought back in and welcomed at this table, not possible. To the one who needs to be reminded that everyone who sits at this table is on an even playing field, every single one of us would be lost if not for the blood of the cross. Let's drink together. Would you pray with me? God, we remember today, together as your body, as your church, we remember the hope that we've been given, which is only possible because of your great sacrifice for us. May we never forget the cost of our freedom. May we never forget that this table you've set for us is not for the elite, but for every single image bearer who wants to walk in the love and the grace available to them through this new covenant that you have made for us. We confess to you that we don't always get it right, that we still need you to heal us, redeem us, and align us with your mission. May you do the necessary work in our hearts and minds so that your kingdom can come through all of us here on earth as it is in heaven, amen. In the third section, we're gonna be going through Thanksgiving. Now in this section, we're gonna be reading a scripture, Psalm 63 again. We'll be singing a song of Thanksgiving. And then we're gonna go into a time where we can actually just think of all of the things that we can be thankful for. Now, sometimes when God does a miracle in our life or shows up in a specific way, or even just seasons where we have felt that God is near to us, in those moments, it is just the only thing we can think of. God is just so present and so real. And yet I feel like a lot of us have had it happen where over time, those moments where he was very near and very real, sometimes we forget that they even happened. And so in our prayers, especially in Thanksgiving, I think it's so important for us to go back into those moments and to remind ourselves of them. Where has God been faithful? Where has he shown up? Where were the moments where it was just undeniably, you just know that you know that you know that it was God? And I think it's really important for us to think of those times because it actually can build faith in us today. And then we're gonna think about, God, what are you doing? What's around me right now so I can have just a heart of thankfulness? Who is it that you've put into my life? What is it that is good that is going on that I can thank you for? And then we look into the future and say, God, I'm gonna hold on to some of those promises. I'm gonna remind myself of some of those things so that I can be thankful and I can be optimistic about what you're going to be doing through and in me in the future. 
And so for some of you that are live with us on Zoom, we're actually going to break off into breakout rooms where we're going to be just kind of telling each other and inspiring each other and encouraging each other with stories of thankfulness and thanksgiving of what God has done in our life. And if you're watching this at home, if you're with some people that are around you, this would be a great time to share some stories and to encourage each other. But if you're at home alone, I think this is again a time where you can just maybe write down or think often about what God has done in your life so that we can just have a heart of thanksgiving. So let's continue our prayer with a time of thanksgiving. Psalm 63, 1-8, NIV. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me.
Now we're going to close this section of thanksgiving off in prayer. So God, we come before you and we just say thank you. We remind ourselves of just the incredible things that you have done in our lives, the ways that you, Creator God, have shown up in a personal way, the miracles, the times where we have felt your presence just close to us, near to us, the things that we've seen you do in the lives of our friends and our family, the people in our church, whatever it might be, and we remind ourselves of those things and we give you thanks. And God, we just hold on to those promises that you have given to us. We remind ourselves of your compassion and your mercy and your grace. We hold on to those things and we believe in them deeply. And we just believe that as we move forward in the future, that everything that's going to be happening in our life that is good is a gift from you. And we thank you. And so God, I just pray as doubt may creep in, as just moments of frustration and stress creep into our lives, that your overwhelming love and mercy would just, just come into our life. Holy Spirit, would you just fill us in those moments and let us know that you are near. And so God, thank you for being a God who is just so massive and even undescribable, indescribable, but also a God who is a father and who is close. And so God, we thank you and we love your name, I pray. Amen. Now in this section, we're going to be having yet again a time of scripture reading. We're going to have a time of worship, and then we're just going to take some time to have personal prayer to God where we can just say, God, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. Or on behalf of someone else, I would like to bring to you some of my personal requests. If you're live with us on Zoom, we're actually going to be doing this in the chat box where we can encourage each other and say, hey, can you pray for me with this? And the rest of us can respond by saying, hey, I'm praying for you, I'm with you, we're beside you, and it's going to be a really good moment. If you're at home, this would be a great time. If you're with your family to kind of, or some of your friends, that you can just kind of come on together and actually just pray with each other out loud. If you're at home alone going through this, this is a time where you can just pray to God specifically, whatever's on your heart, whoever it is that you are just feeling a burden for. And we can just have a time of prayer specifically with supplication. And so let's do that for the next few minutes. God, you're my God. I can't get enough of you. I've worked up such hunger and thirst for God, traveling across dry and weary deserts. So here I am in the place of worship, eyes open, drinking in your strength and glory. In your generous love, I am really living at last. My lips brim praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise to you. I eat my fill of prime rib and gravy. I smack my lips. It's time to shout praises. If I'm sleepless at midnight, I spend the hours in grateful reflection because you've always stood up for me. I'm free to run and play. Hold on to you for dear life. And you hold me steady as a post. Lord, I am free. 
let's close this time of supplication off with just a time of prayer together. So God, we come before you with the things that have been burdening us. Maybe it's sickness, maybe it's grief, maybe it's doubt, maybe it's fear, whatever it might be. Maybe we're praying for our neighbors or our family members. Maybe we're praying for people in our lives that we would just love to um, just work on their relationship with you a little bit more. God, would you use us as best as you can? We submit ourselves to you. And so whatever it is that we're coming to you with, God, we're also saying use us in it. Give us opportunity to speak life and truth to those that are around us that might be hurting. But God, we also just come to you as broken people. And we say, God, we need your help. Will you help us? We need your guidance. Will you show us the way? God, we just submit ourselves to you. You are God, we are not. You are able to do anything and everything. And we don't know why or how or when you will do certain things, but we do know that you are listening. We do know that even though you are creator God, that you are caring about us personally. And so we just submit ourselves to you yet again and we ask for things. And we say, God, as we are trying to extend this kingdom, I just think that this would be incredibly helpful. Or God, can you just feel my heart? Or can you understand my pain? Can you be with me? And so God, I just pray that in each of our lives, you show up very real in this exact moment. That as we move forward from this time, that we can just see you continually working. And so God, again, we thank you and we love you. In your name I pray, amen. So that concludes our prayer. Again, I, I would want you to hopefully have had a time of specific prayer where you just said, wow, I feel refreshed. I feel encouraged. But also, I hope that you can take some of these creative and different ways of prayer and just bring them into your own personal prayer life. Maybe there was a, a section or an outline or even just an adult coloring page that you're like, man, this can actually change the way that I pray because it actually helped me focus. And so hopefully these are going to be some things that you can take into your own personal prayer life. But I encourage you often, take time to pray. Use this Acts model to be able to just help you go through an outline as you pray. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to go through this again with just a different outline with some different creative elements to hopefully even again have a time together where we can pray, but also just teach you more and more ways that we can pray alone and together. Have a great day.